you all set and ready? Yep. All right, let's get into it. So what can I do you for today? So I just, I kind of want to get a direction on what I should do with Neo and if I can maybe skip Absola. Okay. Yeah, because we had a video on that where um, skipping is like a strong word, but like skipping doing very heavy investing in Absolab, right? Yeah, basically that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see if you're a candidate for that. So the main questions for that is, um, so your, your rate of progress needs to be that uh, to be able to support this change, right? So you would have to be able to make um, money at a decent interval and be progressing through the game at a decent interval for this to be worth it. Otherwise, it, you're literally just, you could be waiting for like two or three years saving up resources before you can make the items. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you feel like you're playing at an interval where you're decently progressing, you're able to buy out all the important droplets from the shop and and some and participate in Star Force events. You play enough for that? Uh, maybe, maybe not enough for all of it, mm -hmm. but like for Star Force in the last one, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't invest in because mm -hmm. I saved for the droplets. Right. But probably for Neo, I can manage to do both. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because you know, there's one shop with uh, money droplets, and then there's one shop with uh, weekly boss access, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. Okay, so so to get like a little bit more of a bearing so to, to kind of like pinpoint, so would you say that, um, cause you made Adele, right? Yep. Would you say that in a month you you almost always, or not even close, um, finish your totems? Uh, not even close. Not even close, okay. So is that... I, I, I basically do the ones you get from the, from the daily gift. Yeah, mm-hmm. And maybe one, two, three maximum. Okay. So this is mostly on like weekends or something where you have bigger blocks of time available? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So th through the week, there's not much, um, there's not enough hours for you to, uh, to hardcore commit, right? Well, there is, but I just don't commit because I don't, don't want to burn out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So how much would you say you you uh, play on like a typical day? Is it just like dailies and a few bosses and then on the weekends training? Yeah, pretty much that. Dailies, horses, uh, some bosses. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, on weekends I train sometimes, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the, um, yeah. So, and, and have you bought out the droplets already from this shop? Uh, I haven't yet, but I will for sure. I'm missing like 500 mil. Okay, okay. And do you know how many droplets you will be on after, or like, let's say after Neo, right? Because that's when we probably also get the the droplet exchange, like with how many you have now, and if you buy out plus if you get the 200 from Neo, how much you will be at? Uh, no, I'm not sure how. Okay. Be at. I haven't checked that. Because that's um, the combination of that and like how many are left and how long you would have to train and farm to, to get those last ones. They'll kind of determine, you know, if it's if it's a smart thing to hold out or if it's better to just go for it anyway and then use what, what you will get as a step up to be able to get to the bosses, right? So what, what level are you right now? Uh, 235. 235? Yep. Okay. Okay. And okay. And given how much time you have to play, I assume that you spend almost all of your time on the Adele and not so much on other characters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, exclusively. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah, I can tell by the Legion that it's pretty exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. It's not pretty. <laughs> well, we all have to start at zero, so <laughs> you're just a little bit closer to that starting point. That's all. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, wait, so are you online right now? Can you check how many droplets you have? Yeah, I am. I have 59 of the... The, like, blue-green ones? The first one, yeah. Uh -huh. And 10 of the other ones. Okay. 
And then... And I have uh, all of the other ones left to buy. So I'll have 60. All right, so it's roughly equal, 59 and 60 if you buy these out, okay. So then 100 extra of each after the shop. So you'll be at 159, 160. Because the total amount of droplets, if you want to make the, the total set, so the equips are 108 each. So probably want to be making four pieces. And then since you have the fake weapon, you can hold off on buying the weapon. Because you yeah. can still get the set effect. Even though a real weapon is really, really good, of course. But um, you can hold off on that for now. Um, so if you have a total of 432, which you... Uh, so we've got 160, 160 to the set, 320. Yeah. So you'll need still a little bit over 100 droplets to be able to buy out the four equips. But then you will be at five set. So the one thing that will be necessary for that is training in areas where they can drop, having enough drop yeah. rate and, and using, you know, just putting in the time and using the totems, of course. But if yeah. you have enough drop rate and your character is strong enough, um, these days you can get close enough to two, some people even go like three to four droplets an hour. Um, so yeah. that does mean in total with, you know, once all the parameters are set and you have all the, the drops and everything in place, that you're looking at somewhere between 50 and 100 hours of um, of training on top, right? So probably closer yep. to the 100. Um, by the end of... Uh, probably by the end of July? Uh, yeah, something like that, by the end of July. If you want to be able to buy everything then. Um, okay. Which, you know, that'll probably be too much extra right for your hours yeah. so yeah. so it's, yeah, so it's yeah, going to yeah. be later than that but it will mean yeah, that fine. in general um starting off by using a few more totems here and there to to speed because that'll be the difference right so if you train and that's kind of like what i was in as well training isn't really my favorite thing and it's not really just very enjoyable for me if you yeah. leave that to just only do it when you really really feel like it um, you can keep your level of enjoyment very high, but you might be looking at like another year or two before you can actually make the whole set and equip it. Versus if you, you know, do make sure you do at least like, do at least two totems per week, for example, right? Maybe one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Then you're already doing, in a month, you're doing like eight versus now you're doing like three or four. And then something that takes a year then takes six months, right? It's like, it speeds it up by a lot just by doing a little bit more now because you're not doing much, right? Percentage-wise, you can do way more and then decrease the speed with which you can get the upgrade by a whole lot or increase the speed, decrease the, the, the time frame. So that might be something that to work on a little bit, but like you said before, like it has to stay fun for you, right? So how can we make sure that the it, it's as rewarding? So one thing that we can work on to make it feel way more rewarding and to give you a better feeling of wanting to train is by highlighting the rewards that you get for training and making those rewards better as well. So increasing your rates during training, um, maybe highlighting which maps are good, um, all of that stuff. So you so you generally, when you're you're, playing you don't really feel like you want to train or do you just feel like there's not enough time to do so yeah I just my schedule is kind of weird and sometimes i just have to leave or do something else mm -hmm. and i can't like commit the full two hours yeah Th that's the main problem it's that's not that problem. i don't have the two hours it's that it's mm -hmm. spread out is it like, I mean, yeah, you don't have to go into detail. It could be like work or family. Yeah, this happens to people a lot. Not having the, the to, able to allocate like a two hour block. And that makes, that makes, uh, that makes sense for sure. So one of the things that people do to combat that is get a kind of farmer. So they can just do, you know, they can do 15 minutes. They can do an hour. They can do four hours. It's way more manageable that way because of you having Kishin end up being tied to the totems, right? Because doing things without totems is just silly. Mm. The other thing yeah. is if you really don't get close to using up all your totems, the other thing is that you just use totems. And if you use it for half an hour, at least you use it for half an hour more than nothing. If you use it for an hour, you use it for an hour more than nothing, yeah. right? I, I actually, I do that sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'll just use it and if I have to go, yep. fuck it. 
yep, then fuck it. Yeah, that's that's kind of gonna have to be your attitude, because otherwise, if you always wait for the perfect opportunity, you're just not gonna progress fast enough. And since you since you did say that you don't really nearly max out your totems, right? If you use you know a total of seven half totems, it's still like you use three full totems versus using nothing, right? So you're still moving forward um, at a faster pace. So yeah, it's better to just see a totem as how much you did use of it rather than how much you didn't use of it in your in your yeah. current situation. Yeah, I started doing that. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's a good change. Um, and did you, um, at least, you know, if you really want to achieve what you're doing, right? Not like saying that it's objectively better to spend more time on this game because we can have a, <laughs> we could definitely have a discussion about that. Um, so when it comes to your reward points, because that can be a, that can be a bottleneck, right? When you want to buy out more totems, um, do you have do you have any questions regarding like making reward points, or can you? No, it, it... I know I know that it's the bosses thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know that. Uh, I'll, I have sometimes extra from NX and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I have enough usually. So and I have like extra most of the time. Right, but that's because you're not buying that many totems, right? Yeah, so, right. would you say you have like an extra 10k, 15k, 20k laying around every month? Or not uh, that much? Not that much, mm -hmm. but at least at least two totems extra. I right. Have. Mm -hmm. So, do you use at all? Do you use uh, monster collection? Monster. Because um, so there's two ways of passively getting a lot of reward points without really needing to put much work in for it at all. Because um, you mentioned bosses, and bosses is a very good source of um, of reward points, but that's an active source, right? You have to go in, you have to kill the boss, and then pick up the points. There's other ways where it's kind of passive and it just goes in the background. So if you check oh, yeah, monster perfect. collection, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you do the the monster exploration, right, you can see that there are different sets that you can explore and different amounts of sets that you can explore based on how many total monsters you've discovered. So this one is just whenever you pick it up and start a new set, like that gives you a decent amount of reward points. And this gives you like almost passive revenue of reward points. And the other thing you can do on the side is Maple M, where there's a little bit of a build-up phase, but then basically you just let the program run in the background uh, and you have just auto farming and it just does the dailies automatically. And you can get 500 reward points a day from that if you link it with your account. So. Basically, if, if you do that every day, just, you know, it's like a few minutes a day of work. Um, you can get 15K per month from that, which is like eight totems or something. So if you need to scale up, right, let, let's say that you actually find a little bit more your groove and you end up, you want to use even more totems using monster collection and and or Maple M, you know, depending on how many more Maple points you need can be a very good way of um, scaling up how many uh, totems you have access to. So that's something to keep in mind, right? When you're like, okay, now I want to go faster, but I can't get the totems. You can use those uh, sources. I also have a more in-depth video on that, on reward points that you can find in the chat. Uh, talks about how to like set it up and link the Maple M and everything. Uh, and the monster collection where you can go, which sets are easy to complete. So, you know, you can <laughs> get that set up a little bit faster. Um, I'm missing like one monster in every Arcane River. Yeah, <laughs> there's always like one uh, one that's a little bit harder than the other ones. Um, yeah, the AFK mobs tend to be very difficult to add, I saw. Um, and if something has three stars, then it's typically a elite boss. So those are yeah considerably harder. And they have a prefix, right? So like in, in uh, Arcane River, you can see the, the Tranquil Erda has three stars. It's a shadowy Tranquil Erda. And then the ripe wolf fruit is the poisonous ripe wolf fruit so those are prefix those are elite bosses so th those are definitely trickier to uh to add for sure yeah. But yeah you can see at the end of the set you can see the color of the box there that determines how long the set is going to take to um to explore and that determines uh, how good the rewards are going to be when you pick it up so the black boxes are the 24 hour sets and those can give you you know um, a lot of reward points the red boxes are, uh, there are two red boxes. There's decent and adequate. And I think the adequate one is a, th the decent I think is a six hour set. And then the adequate I believe is three hour. Yeah, and then the gray boxes, the smallest boxes is one hour set. So is there any 
easy ones I can farm, or is that just natural? Yeah, that's uh, so. If you check the video, it's like part of the part of the video. They oh, talk okay. about like which sets are like the twenty four hour. You so optimally you get the six hour sets and always every six hours click it but of course you know you sleep by eight hours you have things to do during the day so that you know that optimization pretty quickly goes out the window the next best thing is just to do a 24 hour set just pick it up and just set it back again and then tomorrow just click it again and in between you do nothing basically so typically people want to go for the 24 hour sets um and then some of those are definitely more accessible more easy than others uh, but that gets, uh, in, they go in depth in that in the guide already. Like that's someone else's guide that they already made. Um, and that seems pretty helpful for a lot of people. So I link to it in the video there as well. Uh, what's the command for the um, I think it's exclamation mark RP or reward points or totems. There you go. Yeah, and there's another link there as well for reward point expiration. For people who don't know that reward points expire. Um, well, your reward points are probably a lot lower than they were yesterday. And that's because all of the points you got in April are now gone. And in 30 days, all the points that you get in May will also be gone. But you have 30 days to spend them, so spend them wisely. Alright, so aiming for the four piece. Yeah, so, so we need to pump out a little bit more training, but I think that can be doable. And then that's the goal. And so in general, um, what kind of content are you doing right now? And what do you really want to be able to kill with the with the new set? Or, or are you just trying to move forward? And that's it? Uh, okay, so right now, I'm actually not doing much except for CRA. I, I think I, I probably can start joining parties for Lotus and Damien, right? I think I'm strong enough for that. I don't know. Have you ever tried? Have you ever gone into the boss fight and just jumped around no, a little I, bit? No, I just I need to do the pre quests. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's a okay. that's a little bit of a bump, yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to start doing uh, the weekly bosses, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and have you done the bosses that are kind of like positioned in between CRA and Lotus and Damien? So there's um, Akechi, Chaos, uh, Papalatus, Hard Magnus. Have you tried those? Uh, Hard Magnus, I tried a few times. Mm -hmm. I, I need to I need to get the mechanics. Mm -hmm. so I think I, I, I think I'm strong enough for to, to solo it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two, no. The other ones, you just haven't tried them. No. Okay. Um, yeah, for Hard Magnus, I mean, I can give a few tips for Hard Magnus, but it, it, it's just practice, right? Um, yeah, the main thing is you always want to, yeah, yeah, well, he, he's just annoying and there's RNG ball, so, you know, it's not even a guaranteed clear. The way you can guarantee the clear a little bit better, uh, two major tips is always find him in the middle of the map, so you're not stuck in the poison gas on the sides. The poison gas only spawns on the side, so if you keep him in the middle and you stay in the middle, then you know you can at least eliminate one of those obstacles there's still the balls falling and everything and he's still sliding and punching but try to not be stuck in the corners of the maps because they once you get stuck in the green mist it's kind of like getting hit by the rocks over and over from vellum right like you just death is imminent when that happens the other thing is if you you know throw out all of your skills and everything and you bind him and you burst him and he's not dead um and he kills you if you're dead in the middle of the map, it's fine. Just stay dead. Just hang around. Uh, use the breath freezer if you have it, right? And, but then just stay dead in the air and just wait for your cooldowns to come back. And if you go back again, again, fighting in the middle of the map and you die again, it's fine. Just stay dead. Because when you're dead, he yeah, can't do anything to you. Yeah, and That's you... the hardest mechanic to, to, to get <laughs> in, in that boss fight is to not press the OK button. Yeah, and it's very tilting. And the more you die, the more you're like, you just want to go in there and just give him a piece of your mind but if you do that he wins <laughs> and if you want to win you have to just play it calm stay cool don't get tilted just wait for your cooldowns wait for your bind to come back and then just give him another bind and burst and then um, the other thing is maybe not use your bind and burst too early because in the beginning you have a big blue area right where you can still stand in the blue and still be out of range from him that's always kind of where you want to be you want to be at the edge of the blue area so like the so within the blue, but the furthest away from him as possible. Um, that's, that's where you want to stand. So in the beginning, you want to just do regular damage, do regular damage. And then once the blue area gets pretty small and you have to get pretty close, then do a big bind and burst. And then just, you know, repeat until until he's dead, basically. 
um, and try to not get tilted. That's that's the main thing for uh, for each mag. And then of course, the stronger and stronger you get, the less you will have to die and, and wait around. And the, fa and the hopefully the closer you get to just chipping him away in the beginning. And then once the blue area is, too, is uh, pretty small, just bind and burst him down, and then he he dies there. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, but it is a pretty good crystal. It gives you gives you good soul shards, you know, flames cubes and everything. Um, so I think it is it is worth. But it's it's also worth in in practicing bosses because stuff falling from the sky is a very very common theme for the harder boss fights. You know, Lotus is going to have a lot of that. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I've watched your mm -hmm. runs. <laughs> Yeah, so everything starts falling from the sky with all the other bosses, so getting used to dodging and getting used to getting out of the way um, and, and um, picking where you can go hard and where you risk a lot, and that's going to take a lot of dying, but you're just going to get more accustomed to that type of mechanic. Oh, the one thing specifically for, um, for Adele is to use your um, Impale and Resonance Rush combo. Do you use that? Yeah, because the horizontal mobili mobility, right? If the stuff is yeah, falling yeah. from the sky, you don't want to have to flash jump. That gives you a, a, a vertical. And if you get a vertical, you get closer to the path of oncoming death. So if you can slide across the map instead, um, getting accustomed to when you can use that or the, or the, the flutter step, right? If it's the other direction, um, getting used to using those at the right time is going to be very important to just, you know, get out of the dodge. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Yeah. yeah, so those tips. Um, and then I think once you've mastered um, H Mag and that you feel more confident in that one, um, I think Akechi Akechi is just annoying, just really annoying. But it's an 86 mil crystal every week. Um, the prequest is pretty long; it's just a lot of holding down the space bar. Uh, but 86 mil a week from the crystal for Akechi is pretty valuable. Um, if you feel like it takes too long for you to kill the boss and it's just too annoying, you can always drop it, of course. But if you're feeling strong, maybe you uh, maybe use the guild skills or something, right? To uh, to do a bunch of your bosses and you still have some guild skills left. Maybe you try a catchy, something like that. And uh, CPEP, of course, has the Papalatus mark as as possible rewards. And also yeah, is a pretty yeah, big that, crystal. I wanted to, to, to try that one. So. Mm -hmm. Have you checked my video on it? Yeah, I wanted to watch it. Mm -hmm. When I will try it, just didn't get to it yet. Yep. No, that's fine. Uh, it's also from the perspective of an Adele, so that should help. Um, and it's a pretty long boss fight because the Adele isn't super strong there. So you see all the mechanics and you see the mechanics going wrong as well and what the effects are. So hopefully that will give you a good insight on where to stand, why I stand where I stand. So I talk through the whole thing to, um, yeah, not just see like, oh, look, this is how easy it is. But like, this is why I stand here. And if I don't stand there, this is what happens kind of thing. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so just slowly work your way up there. And then I feel like once you've done those, then I would start working on Lotus and Damien. And then for Lotus and Damien to start off with, before looking for parties, I would just go in solo, go in practice mode, and just hop around and just try to survive. And focus on just living and see what kills you, how does it kill you, when does it kill you, see how you survive, how you get pushed, what is the range of the attacks, what are the rhythms of the attacks, and how do I, how do you dodge things, and how quickly do you have to move out of the way, and how much damage can you do. And once you just get more and more familiar with that, and you won't be killing it solo immediately, right? You'll just getting through the phases a little bit. But once you feel more confident, at least in the first and the second phase for Lotus, or at least getting through the first phase, you know, dodging the swords, cleansing in Damien, that kind of stuff. Once you get through that, then I think it's a good idea to start looking for parties. You feel more, you feel more confident, you know, like you know at least what you're doing. If someone else fucks up, that's on them. But at least you're not completely going like a babe in the woods, like, this is all new, what do I do, kind of thing, right? Because panic leads to more mistakes than if you have more experience. All right, um, the other thing that will allow you to boss more efficiently and give you a lot of damage in bossing is building out your Legion and your Lynx. That just yeah, gives I you... Because yeah. grinding is very easy, specifically on an Adele. You just you have a great kit. You're just hopping around. Everything dies around you. It's, it's amazingly... Uh, it, it's simple. But then you get to the level where you're at, and now you need real damage to start killing things, right? You need a lot of damage. And especially the bosses, they start creeping up on you real quick. And every new boss is way harder than the last one. 
And the main thing that Legion and Lynx uh, give to you is boss damage, IED, critical damage, and you know crit rate. Like those four, those big areas, they are kind of like the silent damage dealers because they don't show up in your range at all. You know, it's, it's it's like your damage doesn't go up if you're looking at your range, but your total damage output on the monsters goes up by so much. It's um it's mainly this Legion and Links and then um, arcane symbols of course and boost notes. Those are like the three main things that are huge. And then equips is, are also there, but they're kind of like the fourth last thing that's kind of important. But these first three things like they they do so much for you uh, because with equips the most important thing is WSE and you have that already legendary and they're already like okay upgraded. So that's that's already like at this point from what I've seen that's already kind of taken care of. The major thing now is that you're going to be benefiting so much from building your legion and your links um because you're already doing those dailies right you're already doing your symbol dailies you're getting um as many nodes as you can right you're getting them from yep. event shops where possible and you're doing the dailies and vanishing journey for those extra nodes and if you're training you know uh we'll work we'll double check with like the drop and mezzo set what you have there to make sure that um that's something we you don't have to work on because like I said as well, right? The drop rate is going to be very important if you want to get those droplets to be able to get that arcane set. So that's why it's going to connect with that. Um, so we have, um, are, are you using any of the bonking with this event? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, can, I, can you wait a second? I get my dog. Dog goes in the chat. Wait, there's a dog champ? <laughs> My dog wanted to get out. <laughs> yeah, the animals do. They just want the, what they want. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm sure you've seen the picture of like a really big legion and a really small legion and seen how huge yeah. the difference is. Um, yeah. That can be pretty daunting on like how the hell do I get started? Yeah. Like I'll never, I'll never reach 9k legion. So, you know, um, it's all about just one step at a time. And the thing is also, if you work on the, your legion, just little by little, before you know it, you'll have a pretty, pretty decently sized legion, but it's just about doing a little bit every day. Um, the way I usually started was just make one new character. I tried every day, but you know, if, the thing is, if your baseline is, I'll do one character a day, and then if you don't feel like it, you can just skip it. It's whatever. But if your baseline is, I never make one, and then you only wait until the perfect moment to make one, then it can take you years before you get your whole Legion started, right? And the thing with Legion is like, uh, it's like with investing and with other stuff, is like the best time to build your Legion is two years ago, and then the second best time is today, right? Um... So if you make one character and get to level 60, which is pretty fast, you know how the game works. Every class is pretty simple in the beginning. Uh, some have longer storylines, so it takes a little bit longer on the buildup. But just a level 60 character gives you 60 levels immediately. So that's the same amount of Legion levels as getting your Adele from 235 to 295. But instead, it's just making a new character to level 60, which compared to how much work you already put in the Adele is like nothing, right? Um, the added bonus is that because you only have four members assigned, every new character is also immediately just going to go on the board and give you some more stat there on top of their member bonus already. So it's going to give a grid bonus immediately and a member bonus. And you just have to think about this as a power in numbers because you have 36 more characters that can be put in the board, uh, that, that can count for your Legion level. And 36 is a huge number. That's a lot of characters to work on. Um, but if you make one character a day, that's just a bit more than a month, right? If you do, if you skip some days, maybe it takes two full months. Let's say it takes two full months to just make all of those level 60 characters, right? But if you get 36 more characters at level 60, that's 2,160 levels. With what you currently have, you'll almost be at 3k. Which seems a lot better you know, than, yeah. than 600. Because once you get to 3k, um, so at 2k, the grid gets uh, expanded and you get access to critical damage, ID boss damage in the beginning. And then 3k, you get access to two, which is really nice. And you get to put five extra characters from two and a half to 3k, five extra characters on your grid rather than one extra. 
And I think 3k is also the point where you'll start feeling that every character, as long as you set their, your Legion and the Link skills to that character, and you'll have access to way more Link skills once you get them all to 70, which is really close to 60, then every new character is going to be so much stronger than what you were... Um, than every new character now. Because right now you make a new character, you make a Mercedes, it's like, it's like the weakest thing ever, right? It just kills nothing, yeah. it's mobility. It's just, it feels bad, it just feels horrible. But every next character is always going to be stronger than it would have been than if you made it earlier. So you, you're basically just making a huge snowball and eventually that snowball is just so huge and it starts rolling that you get those screenshots like, uh, I don't know if you saw the, the things that uh, Copa-san did, right? Because he has finally has his big legion online uh, and he made like a level 10 Mihail and he put all of his links and his legion to his character and he hit like, I don't know, like 500,000 damage or something on a on a ranked um, on a ranked skill at level 10. Like that, those are the things that you eventually are going to be able to uh, be doing. But there's a build-up phase, so I think one thing that's going to be nice is to think about for and this ties back to your question for the Neo prep. Uh, Neo is most likely going to have the same in KMS. Is going to have two Terra burns, so to figure out which two characters you want to Terra burn at 200. And for all the other ones, I would just make one character a day or maybe every other day, you know, whenever you have time available for you to just make a character and try to get it to level 60 and then just move on to the next character. And if you're feeling it, get it to 70 and leave it. If you're really feeling it, get it to 100 because then you could just do Zakum every day. Um, but you can also just take it one step at a time, just do 60 at a time. It's pretty fast, um, pretty simple for most characters. Or do less, do like 40, and then the next day do 60. You know, whatever works for you. But do a little bit every day, and then you'll get a 2K, 3K Legion. Within like a month or two, your Legion is going to start feel looking way better. And then from there on out, I would work on all the level 1 Link skills to get everything to 70. Um, and then if you get some characters to 100, then you can start making a lot of experience with very little time because then you can just log in, do Zakum, log out. And that's a very good cluster of experience in a very short amount of time that will help you build your entire Legion out to 4K, 5K, and eventually to 6K once you have a bunch of level 140 characters. That's, you know, that's like another few months extra, right? But the amount of time that you're spending per day is going to be minimal, and it's also going to be flexible, which I think is very important for you. It's not going to be like you have to use a totem and grind for two hours. No, it's click on a character, log in, kill Zakum, log out. You can do that all throughout the day, right? You can do like five, six, or seven throughout the day. You can do one in the morning, one during lunch, right? Yeah. And coupled with the flexibility that you need, or with your dog that needs to go in and out of the house, right? You can... Um, it's basically like you're constantly training on something that gives you the same rates as, as Zakum if you have enough character that have access to it. But you're spreading your progress equally throughout all of your characters. Which again, every level counts as one level in your Legion. But it's of course way easier to get a level on a level 101 character than on a level 235. So once your Legion reaches over 4k and everything, um, not only is it going to take way less time to get one level, it's also going to be less important to get those levels. So at that point, you can reevaluate for yourself, like, okay, how much time am I spending on Legion? How much time am I spending on events? How much time do I want to spend on my main character? And just reevaluate that balance for you. Make sure you don't burn out, but and make sure that the time that you're spending is where you want it. But initially, um, hopefully I, I clarified that importance because even though you want to get stronger on your main character, at this point, there's going to be a lot of value on getting stronger on your main character by not playing your main character, which will feel weird. Yeah. So have you given some it's thoughts? Still, still yeah. Weird this thing in my yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But uh, I mean, you've seen the list, right? All of the link skills combined, all of the Legion buffs, grid bonus and member bonus combined, how much that is. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, how, how much money would you have to spend to make your equips good enough to overcome all of that, right? It's so much. Plus, the great thing is that if you build on your Legion and your links, it's interchangeable, so you're basically funding any new character that you start playing will immediately be funded by that. So um, if there's any other class that comes out that you like a lot or you want to play a character on the side um, where you don't feel like playing the Dell very much, you'll immediately be able to cut another character where it's not just you know hitting your head against the wall, but you, your character can actually kill stuff and can actually do things. And that'll, um, that value will be immeasurable as well. So I don't know if there's any other characters that you have any interest in, or if you've thought about Neo and Terraburn, which characters you wanted to burn? 
I, I kind of thought about Beast Tamer after your video, mm -hmm. and also Demon Slayer in chat. Yeah, those Both sound of like... them as, as either one as, as like a secondary mm -hmm. character main kind of thing, and and one of them like as a secondary, and then the second burn or maybe a character for the Legion. Mm -hmm. Or thing skill. Yeah, so both of them, yeah, well, they're both going to basically be like free level 200s, right? I mean, there's, of course, you have to spend time, but you will, um, you will get those, um, those levels for sure. Um, and they have really good Legion and Link skill buffs, both of them. Uh, well, the Legion buff for DS isn't that good, but that's made up by how good their Link skill is. And if you burn up the way up to 200, they have excellent fifth job kits. Uh, the Beast Timber one is more of a bossing one than a mobbing one, but Beast Timber's mobbing apparently is very, very good now with the bird form. And um, the, the, B, the DS fifth job kit is just crazy for bossing. So that should be an open path as well to get those to 210, which gives you two very, very good link skills, uh, both for the Adele and for your entire account. Um, Beast Timber a little bit more multi-purpose, of course, because it has the crit rate, which is very, very good. Um, for your uh, for your account building, right? Because uh, many characters are very weak in the beginnings, specifically because they have shit crit rate, which means like none of your critical damage is happening. You're just all do hitting non crits, and non crits are like it's like hitting things with, with a wet noodle, right? Nothing dies. So critical rate is going to be a very important thing to build on. Critical rate, base experience. Once you get those up, every new character is already going to feel way 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 better. Um, but those are those are solid options, I think, for Neo. So you have my uh, you have my blessing on those two. <laughs> uh, and I think yeah, I think for b even building up to like being able to do CRA and stuff with both of those characters seems pretty doable. Maybe not you know as quickly or as easily as I did it because you know there's a there's a big 8K Legion building behind that, right? And all of the link skills yeah. working behind that. So you're gonna need to overcome that. And uh, you know boost nodes is gonna be a thing. All of that, of course, it's not gonna be as simple. Even uh, if I made it look a little bit easier than it is. Um, but I think those are, are solid characters to work on. Um, so on top of that, do you, how do you feel about what I said with like the making one character a day or every other day just to build up your Legion? Is that something you think you can do? Something that's feasible or does that still seem too much? I will definitely try it, see mm -hmm. how it goes. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be too much to make. I mean, if it's, if it's different character, maybe I won't burn, burn out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll try. yeah, that's another thing, right? Because burnout can also be part part of it can be repetition, and like constantly making a ca character can be seen as repetitious. But you're constantly making a different character, which can actually maybe you find a character that you actually really like, or you find one that you really really hate, right? Both will probably happen. Um, in general, though, if there's a character you really really hate, you can just you know skip it and go back to it later, and then maybe there's a mega burn or a terror burn later. You know, if you want to go for a big legion, then you just circle back to it. But in general, if a character has really good value, at least getting it to 70 will give you that access to the legion levels and will give you the access to the link skill, and then you at least have something to go on. And then every other character is going to be able to benefit from that. So um, it, it's just daunting to start in the beginning because there's just so much to work on, and you're like, ugh, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. and, and of course you had all the compensation as well from the Adele that you didn't want to waste, so you probably trained very hard on the Adele to make sure that you use all the compensation, right? Like the level up potions and the triple EXP, yeah. all of that stuff? Uh, for most of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wh which does mean that you kind of, um, there's like an imbalance, right? Because in general, if someone is this high level and this this strong as you are, typically the other stuff is kind of stronger as well. If you you know balance out your time, so now you kind of want to reset the balance a little bit and make sure that the other parts that have been, well, neglected sounds really strong, but just like underrepresented, that those pieces um, have a little bit more time to shine and come to the foreground and to work for your account to make your character stronger. Um, are you familiar with the links command that I have? Yeah, yeah, I, I have it open mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, so I would use that as a general order of making the characters that you don't have yet. And um, yeah, so either go to 60 for the level or, or 70 for the level one link skill, uh, whatever you feel like doing. Do it in one day, do it in two days, whatever you know works for you. Uh, but do a little bit every day. And um, you will see like big results very quickly. 
and um because that will work you know that will connect into everything else that we want to talk about is you know how do we make the bossing easier and it's also going to take a lot of pressure off of your um in certain places off of your hyperstats and more of your reliance maybe of the current vip buff right because now you're probably thinking like if the vip buff goes away you know a lot of the other stuff goes away and then your damage goes away as well um but you'll be able to remove move a little bit around with your hyper stats depending on which characters you get at what, at what point and there's still a whole bunch of room to for improvement or just you know access to link skills as well right because that's pretty empty right now so we'll be able to fill that up with a whole lot of stuff as well does it seem exciting or still a little bit scary <laughs> Could be both. Yeah, it could be both, of course. Interesting. Yeah, there's just a uh, yeah. There's 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 a lot of work there. Um, but just getting started and doing a little bit every day will 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 get you there. And if it's just not for you, and you know, just building the whole Legion thing is just not for you. You just focus on events. You focus on level up events, right? But like the thing, and if we had a progression session previously with that. Like the thing with the bonking is that the people who have a bunch of levels, uh, level 140 characters already, because they were building towards a 6k legion, those people are in a perfect position to be like, oh, I'm just going to bonk every day. And then in no time, they can build up from a 6k to a 7k and get like very close to an 8k legion. But the value of those events heavily uh, is determined by how much pre-work you've already done. And in your situation, you can't take any advantage really of the bonking, right? You can bonk one, maybe two characters, and then all the other characters haven't been made yet. So those can't even bonk because it's between level 141 and, and 199. So you kind of lose the access there to the, the thing. Of course, you know, you don't want to go full FOMO and be like, oh, it's horrible because I can't use the event. But there is there is value there that you could be taking advantage of if you were in a different situation. Does it all, that all make sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with that being said, how big is your VIP buff right now? Because your stat window in the beginning is including that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so assume you have it maxed or close to? Yeah, it's maxed. Okay. Um, so I guess the important part is uh, crit rate and IED. Do you... How much do you I get from that? The oh, okay. So thirty defense, twenty crit, yeah. thirty boss as well. Okay. Yeah. So once the ID goes away, that's gonna be a pretty big bump, right? Do Do you know about ID and how that all works? Yeah, yeah, I know. So, have you looked at the ID sources that I have? The, uh, oh, the, the command? Yeah, yeah, I know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, and crit rate wise, are you going to drop below 100% once you lose? Uh, 20%? From the event, I think I'll, I'll have like 98. Okay. With. with uh, with sharp eyes. Yeah, yeah, okay, with decent sharp eyes, yeah, okay. All right, so that's not a huge problem. But the IED dropping is gonna be important, especially if you're gonna be doing bosses like Seavel and everything beyond. Uh, the IED is gonna be a bit um, a bit on the low side for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm getting the, the monster park on, on Friday. Okay, that's cool, that's a good buff. And um, do you have anything in ways of familiars? No. Okay. No. Do you know how Familiars works and how you can get started on that? Know how they work? I thought I can only do Familiars like, or I should do Familiars only around like Moonbridge. I, can mm -hmm. I do it before that? Well, yeah. So if you're looking for higher ranked Familiars and like en masse getting Familiars, that's pretty much Moonbridge and, and up, yeah. Um, before that, I think it's a little bit of a waste of time. If you heavily want a boss, um, it's probably going to be, and especially as an Adele, it's probably going to be fine to just grind it out. And then once you get to Moonbridge, just open all the familiars you get there. But there are some familiars and some kind of things you already want to have set up by the time you get there. So one of the things that you can do, and that'll be uh, facilitated by working on your Legion and your Lynx, 
is that once you level a bunch of characters, you're gonna get like a bunch of weird, you know, random uh, familiar cards depending on where the characters level, right? Um, and what you can do is you can move all of those familiar cards through your storage to your main character, to your Adele, and just open them there. And the things you're going to be looking for is on both common and rare cards, it can happen on both, is 15% IED line. That'll be very nice. And any kind of healing and any kind of drop rate will be will be nice. Uh, everything else you can just like extract and get points in the you know that you can spend in the shop uh, or that you can use the familiar essence with. Uh, but other, but the 15% IED is going to be very nice because there's not much you can get right now, but 15% IED is significant. And it'll also be useful to unlock your second batch slot so that you can equip two familiars, at least for now. Yeah. But that's pretty simple. You only have to complete one batch, so that's, um, that's pretty simple, right? Yeah. Um, so that's something that you can work on and that you will work on automatically once you're working on Legion and Lynx more. And, and it's mainly because, um, you know, you're all over the place on new characters and you're moving around. It's mainly going to be from Drakes that you get a decent amount of cards because, you know, once your character goes there, you probably start killing those at a pretty good rate and uh, you'll be able to get a lot of them. But, yeah, you work on on getting really good familiars, excuse me, like on epic and, le and unique ones, not legendary, we can't get that, <laughs> epic and unique ones, that's in Moonbridge because then you need the same familiars and you need to stack them together to fuse them and level them up. So you can't really work on that in the beginning because you're moving around in areas too much or you're in areas where they don't drop. So that's why people say that, you know, you don't go too hard on, on familiars until Moonbridge. But it doesn't mean you can't get anything from them, right? Because even the common ones can get you to 15% IED. Yeah, because I think that'll be necessary to to uh, finish the gap that you get from VIP, and especially until you get more access to more uh, link skills and to more Legion characters, increasing your uh, your grid. Because you don't have uh, you have one line of of IED right now, yeah, on your emblem. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, emblem is fine. So yeah, so yeah. yeah, the WSE is for your current stage seems uh, perfect where it is. It just sucks the 20% boss line. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I don't know why that exists in Legendary. That's just so silly, but that should just be a 30% line. It's like a slap in the face. Um, okay, yeah, so lots of room here. Uh, familiars. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the IED stuff, right? And you're getting your badge, that's uh, your metal, that's good. And you have one line there. Yeah, of course, things like Golux are a little bit far away. Uh, have you tried Golux at all? Like Hard Lux? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. That could be another thing to, uh, you know, if you have the time to uh, get started on. Helix is something that you want to start running when you're also at the point, basically, where you're doing the Lotus and Damien. Um, but it's closer to, like, when you're soloing Lotus and Damien. Because Helix is just annoying really annoying um he's doable but like very annoying it's kind of like at the h mag level where <laughs> you can you what you can also do is like go in and burst no binding though so burst and be and still be very careful uh and as long as you don't build any stacks you can go out and just wait for your cooldowns to come back like go out through the portal and then just walk back in and then do your thing again but um yeah it's it's not a fun boss so it's it's another one of those where you need to use the best mechanic in the game which is damage and, um, yeah, that just takes a while to build up. But, yeah, I think after you... Those three bosses we mentioned, right? It might be a good idea to try Hard Lux after that, just to get a little bit more familiarized with the mechanics of Golux. Uh, but I wouldn't really try for Helix or anything until you're more established and, like, duoing Lotus and Damien, something like that. Because before that, it's just... Yeah, it's, it, it either takes forever or it's really, really annoying, so... To kind of put them in uh, in order there for you. Um, uh, link skill for base all about some boost nodes. Oh yeah, the other thing will be like boost nodes and stuff. Uh, oh, what kind of access do you have to guild skills? By the way, I don't know what kind of levels do you guys get. Uh, I have the great and damage one max. Mhm. Mm okay, that's Boss a good. And then a little bit in boss? Yeah. Yep. 
yeah, that's pretty standard, okay. Well, I mean, not that it's like mediocre, it's really good, of course, it's really useful. Um, with that in mind, um, okay, let's check the matrix real quick. If, if there's anything that we went over and you still have a question on the topic, let me know before we move on, okay? Yeah. I mean, you can always ask later as well, but just to make sure that like a topic is... So when it comes to Lynx and Legion, um, does that all make sense or do you have any extra questions on that? Make sense. Okay. All Good. things I sort of knew, but just didn't have someone to tell me to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I need a good kick in the behind every now and then too. <laughs> and then that's just you know sometimes just getting started is the hardest part, and then once you get started, it's not so bad. Yeah. Um. So your current, uh, you're aiming for four boost nodes that have the perfect coverage of all the skills, right? But for now, you're triple boosting your main skills mm -hmm. over the other ones. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a that's a good idea. Um, and you're pretty close to getting to sixty. So once you get to sixty, then you'll uh, then you can start moving them around, right? Are you saving? Um, you're you're not saving any of the boost nodes that have the different starter skills, right? Than these four. Different. Uh, no, I I have uh, some. I have uh, magic dispatch. Mm, magic dispatch, yeah. Because I think once you're at this level, and because you're an Adele, and and the skills are pretty well clustered, I think it's good enough to just. Um, I think yeah. I think you, it's fine to work on like all of the boost nodes until they're like around level 15. Um, and then, because that means with the rank ups, there'll be a 20, which means that if you then settle and spread everything around, then everything will be at least 40 to get the boost nodes, um, the 20% ID, right? So if they're at least 15, I think you're fine, even beyond this point, to extract all of the boost nodes that don't have any of the four beginning skills. So like, uh, so Cleave, Rain of Destruction, um, Hunting Decree, or Etherforge. Yeah. That anything that's not those four, you can just extract because you will you will get your like combination of four nodes that you need. Um, that will that will work out. Uh, you'll just need the, the correct combination of four. So once you have them all at 15, I would just hold all of your Cleave, Rain of Destruction, Hunting Decree, and uh, other Forge ones, and just wait until you find the right set of four, and then use your, cur if you have to, which you probably will have to for some, uh, which you definitely will have to for some, is use your current nodes to level up those boost nodes, and then use those as the base boost nodes, and then just start leveling up those and, and, and continue and stop holding would be a good idea okay and then you can make sure that everything is at least level 40 gets the boost nodes and then start working again so you'll see a little bit of a decreased damage right because you'll move from level 60 to level 40 boost nodes for those beginner skills uh but probably not to 40 probably not to like 45 to 50 right and then from there on out you can start leveling them again and they'll pretty quickly get back uh get back up to 60 but there's a lot of damage there the other thing that does a lot of damage during your burst is your infinity blade um so that together with your um probably with your decent holy symbol that's going to be the most important skill nodes to level once your boost nodes get like over level 20 you know they're like level 22 or something uh then you probably still want to start focusing on the um uh, on the skill nodes instead because you're still going to be opening nodes and you're still going to be opening a bunch of boost nodes and your boost nodes will level up and max out eventually uh, but it's pretty expensive to make a bunch of specific boost nodes with shards so I would focus a little bit more on skill nodes at that point. Yeah. Uh, other than that, your matrix seems uh, fine. You're holding on to blink. Uh, you can get rid of, rid of decent Mystic Door and and, uh, and Hyper Body. Those do absolutely nothing for you. Those are just a waste. But everything else is pretty much everything else. Impenetrable skin. Sorry, skin? Uh, impenetrable skin. Yes. What? That one can be useful in, in situations where you need um, knockdown resistance. So, for example, um, if you're trying to burst down HMAG uh, and you use Impenetrable Skin, he can't knock you away with a blue hit anymore. You're just going to tank that and stand still. 
or for Lotus, for example, when he tries to push you back, if you have a, you're like on a platform and he's right next to you and he's going to push you off and there's stuff falling from the sky so you can't jump up because you're going to get knocked around. Uh, impenetrable skin there will make it so that you can just tank his attack and you won't get knocked back and will later as well. So it, it definitely has some places for use and it stacks extra percentage damage as well the more you get hit. So for your burst, it'll be beneficial, but it's, it's for later down the road. Next thing that will give you a lot of damage is probably the um, the the goddess blessing, right? A lot of weapon attack in that. Yeah. It's gonna be huge for your bursts. I I put that in instead of the arcade reflection, my boss. Um, instead of which one? The arcade reflection. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The will thing. Right. Yeah, that skill is also very good, but um, what you could also do, I mean, if you want to min max it, what you could do is put it instead of holy symbol, and then right before the boss dies, you can switch out holy symbol with one of the boost nodes, because those can't go on cooldown, and then pop holy symbol and kill him. And then you just, well, then for the next boss, you would have to wait until, <laughs> until holy symbol comes back off cooldown to switch your boost node around again, of course. Um, but if you want to min max it like that, you, that's also an option that you could do. Because, I mean, because the True Record Reflection does a lot of damage. Even at level 1, it's level 3 now for you, so it does a bit more. Um, for me, I think it does, on my arc, I think it does like 4%, three, between 3 and 4% of all of my damage. By just being there, and because the summon lasts for like 40 seconds, and it does lines just to the ceiling, so it does hit pretty hard. Um, okay, I think, um, I don't know what all of your passive hyper skills are, but typically I think Adele's level up the Ether Bloom cooldown reduction. Yeah, I had that instead of the ID, but oh, okay. I just kind of made the ID, so I, I put it in. And the other one is uh, the shield. Yeah, mm -hmm. the yeah, the shield is going to change, right, after Neo, so that'll yeah, probably so. be get moved around anyway. <laughs> Yeah, okay, just wanted to double check that. All right, anything else with Matrix that you have questions on? Matrix, no. No. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, so ID-wise, we want the familiars to come in. You have the boost nodes, you have your passive 10%, of course. Um, yeah, some some Legion and Link work will cover the the difference, and we'll get you hopefully up to like visually closer to. Well, you you should visually get just over ninety once you have your two stacks built up. That's probably where you want to be, so that your boost nodes go on top of that, and if you get the Explorer Mage skill for bossing, that goes on top of that, and your Grave Pact goes on top of that, right? Or Grave Proclamation, I mean, sorry, yeah. Yep. Um, and then you should be at a good spot. Then you should be at a functional of like around 94 or something. So that's that's going to be like dream scenario. And then you keep that until you either get your 8k legion, like your huge block in legion board, or until you get the superior Gallic set completed, whichever one you get first. Once you get that, then you can redo your potential on your emblem is basically what you're going to be looking at for IED. And for crit rate, you know, if you get more crit in Legion and Lynx, what's going to happen is that you're just going to be able to move your hyper stats away from crit and move it into IED and boss damage instead, which will also help a little bit with the IED build. So that'll be fine there. Um, you're going to get a lot of damage. Um, don't underestimate that part. Um, you see your crit damage is pretty low. So any kind of things in the Legion and Link grid that gives you critical damage is also going to be a huge damage increase. Again, you're not going to see it in the range, of course, but in the damage output and how quickly things die, that's going to be huge. So like the trifecta of Hayato, Shade, and Jet, those three getting some crit damage in, that's, already, that's also going to be a huge benefit. And of course, the other step is going to be to get the crit damage on the gloves, but that's going to be more of a question of like how hard do we go before the arcane movement right okay
Okay. So with all of that being said, the next and your WSE being nice, the next thing I think that we should focus on is your drop rate and mezzo set, right? Because the character has very good base damage, so your kill speed. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So your kill speed for uh, for monsters is very good, and you're not super reliant on your gear as much as other people are by still being able to kill things near your level, especially because your boost nodes are also very good. So the um, the main thing will be, of course, to keep getting boost like node stones where you can, and keep doing your symbol dailies. Um, before we so before we totally go into this, do you have any question about symbol dailies? About anything there? Typically, Spirit no. Savior and Dream Defender can be a little bit. Um, no, so, uh, I mean Spirit. Oh no, wait, Dream Defender is the one that's kind of annoying because mm -hmm. I can't get past the. Uh, Stage 60 or something. So you've cleared 60, but, like, but you can do 61 and after that? No, I, I, can, I can't get to 70, though. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I can do to the, till 65 or something. Mm -hmm. I can't get past that. Yeah, that's fine. But, so if, if you know that you're kind of like stuck there and it's not possible to go all the way, have you like have you used all of your skills when trying that? Like the Monster Park potions, guild skills, all of those buffs? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing that you can do is just go in, clear floor 60, and then just go out and auto-complete and then yeah, be that, done. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. Right? Yeah, because then you can save up the points, right? And then with the points, you can kind of safeguard getting up to 70 because you can use the bell to uh, uncorrupt one of the music boxes in the beginning of every stage. And then climbing from 60 to 70 will be way easier. Okay. But yeah, you need a little bit of time to build up those points. So if you're just, you know taking time and clearing 60 every day, then that's fine. And then once you get stronger and once you have enough points built up, then you can just easily boost to 70, maybe even all the way up to 80, you know, depending on how long it takes. Uh, but you'll, yeah, especially because of your flexibility and because of your time constraints, um, yeah, it'll be better to just wait until you make a huge upgrade or until you have like the full 3000 points built up before you try to climb to 70. Third saver is just it's easy. Not really. Um, yeah, Dream Defender is fine. Uh, sorry, Spirit Saver is fine for you for 10k day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Or 10k per run, I guess. Um, okay, good. Right, so what's going to be really important is the mezzo and the drop rate, of course, because this is what also gives you value in feeling like you're achieving a lot and you're getting a lot of value back from spending your time training, right? Um, and we want to get those droplets, of course, so that we can move into the thing. Because if you're fine and you're killing the bosses that you are right now, and you're fine killing the monsters around your level, I really don't see that much um, necessity for you to go into Abzo, like you said. And I think um, quasi or like fully skipping Abzo might actually be the right move for you. Um, so the main thing is to keep in mind to have enough money to buy out all the droplets, right? Uh, but you're going to yeah. be fine with these, and for the next ones you have so much extra time. I assume you're doing Maple Tour and Ursus every day? Yep. You have time for that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the accessories will be the next important thing. So right now, what do you have in terms of Mezzo Obtain and Drop? Because you're just getting missing, started on that, right? Yeah, I'm missing one image of the uh, eye accessory with Mezzo Obtain. Oh, I see a face accessory. Oh, there was an extra eye accessory? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not in the image. Though. Oh, I see, okay. Zakun one. Zakun one, okay, cool, cool. Alright, so you have three line mezzo, one line, and uh, two line, no. Two line mezzo, two line drop now? Yep. Okay, okay. Sorry. And your inner ability is a 20% drop, okay. So that's also nice for that. That helps out. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so the best thing, I think you're, you're on, definitely on the right path with that. The best, the best thing to do is just to get one item to either drop or mezzo at a time and then move on to the next item. Um, and of course now whether you get item, mezzo or drop is going to be fine for you because you still need both. Um, uh, once you go over the amount, so you want to get five mezzo and four drop, right? Um, at least, because uh, there's nine accessories that can get drop and mezzo. Uh, once you get 
over five of mezzo or over four of drop, then um, in the beginning, you know, you just keep going until you have all nine. But you want to get to that set, and to get to that set, it'll be most um, it'll be like optimal to make sure that you can uh, that you roll the items that are extra on that don't also have a line of strength on them. So that the ideal end situation is like four item, uh, five items with uh, mezzo and a line of strength, and then four items with drop and a line of strength, because all of those lines of strength will add up enough to account for the fact that the base stats of the items aren't super high, without uh, and helping in the kill potential still without hurting your your progression and your and your rates of killing monsters. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a really nice earring flame actually. <laughs> Which is uh, good because this earring is going to stay with you for quite a while. So this is also one that you can definitely get to uh, legendary and get the lines on. Do you do you have like an idea of which items you would want to get to drop in mezzo set, or do you need some help with that as well? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? So when you're thinking about the nine equips, right, that will be getting mezzo or drop rate, do you have a clear picture in your head of which nine equips those are going to be? Or do you need some advice uh, in that part? Uh, I mean, I th basically all the rings, and I have one the on the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another pendant that I can. Which uh, pendant is it? Uh, the great pendant. Pendant. Mm -hmm. I, it's unique, I can get it to legendary. Okay, good. And the extra ring, the platinum brass, I I'm gonna I didn't I don't know where to get the ring. Mm hmm Or like I was kinda get waiting for Neo to get the other ring. Yep. And I think they're basically gonna be my damage rings, right? Yeah, there's a yeah. At this point, they're gonna be they're gonna be the strongest rings that you can get uh, by by a by a big. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure what to do with the last ring part. Yeah, so there's a few options. Um, I don't know how you're doing with the coins, but right now there's still the Cosmos and Vengeful reboots rings that you could buy. Those could fill up a slot, and then there's a yeah, like oh, yeah, you said, the yeah, Neo rings. So. Um, I don't think so. The ones from Neo are going to be pretty expensive, and since you're focusing on making sure that you can buy all the droplets, doing all the weekly bosses, and working on your Legion, um, you want to make sure that you don't overload yourself with stuff to do during Neo, right? So if you're like, oh, I have to get like those two rings as well, those are going to be very expensive, and I have to do all of those other pieces of content as well. If you can get some of the Neo rings, those will be very, very good because they will basically be equivalent of like a 17 star. Uh, ring if it's like a solid or a reinforced or a superior or a meister uh, You know superior has a set bonus of course, so not for that part But um, they're kind of equivalent to a 17 star ring without having to spend the money on star forcing um, Whether you get the awake tenebris or the glory ring they're like the same stats um, You could get all three, you know if you're going like super hard um, One or two would also be great, but in total in your whole account you want to move towards having at least eight total rings. Um, so eventually the superior is going to come into play. Eventually the Kana treasure is definitely going to come into play. Um, for that, by the way, are you doing Princess No? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Um, started that. Yeah, it's, it, well, the, the, she can drop the Kana ring every time you kill her and it's a weekly boss. Um, so if you have time for that, uh, consider it. It's not like super duper priority now, right? Because you're going to be relying on event rings for a long time. But, you know, if you can get some drops, and by the time you want to switch over from the event rings into Star Force rings past 17 stars, if you have a bunch of kind of treasure rings, or a bunch, you know, if you have like four or five built up by then, then that'll give you um, a, a more, a, a clearer picture of like where can your money go to make upgrades. Whereas if everything is kind of on the same level of risk, because of the same amount of backups or and that number is very low, then it'll be very tricky at that point to be like, okay, what do I invest in now? Whereas if you have five backups of something and just one of another one, it's more clear like, okay, I can take more risk here and this is definitely where I have more room to grow rather than the other one that's very risky. So that can also kind of, with, with some things that progress in a slower way like that, um, the sooner you start doing that and building up, it can, make your path of where to go in the future clearer. 
Uh, but yeah. yeah, of course, you know, it depends on if you have the time, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm adding like a lot of stuff on your plate here. But the main thing is that I'm just giving you a lot of options of things that you can do. Um, and then you, so that you don't like load into the game. And you're like, okay, I have time now, but I have no idea what to do. Instead, like if you have time, you could be like, okay, I can do this. That takes an hour. I can do this. That takes half an hour. Um, what do I have time for? What do I want to do? Right. Um, it's more like you get to pick <laughs> which of these things you want to do. Not like do all of these every day because... I'm not going to make you play seven hours a day versus what you're playing now, of course. That's not going to make you happy, and that probably will burn you out, so we don't want to do that. Uh, that's basically what burned me out last time I played mm -hmm. EU. Yeah, because yeah, there's so much things I that are useful, and everything like is... Everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so with Neo, I think it, it'll be good to aim for like at least one ring in Neo, but I won't. Uh, I wouldn't say like, okay, I'm gonna get all three and all the droplets, and you know, and work on all the bosses, and work on all the dailies, and work on my Legion. That's just that's probably too much. So maybe aim for one ring. Um, so I think with that in mind, it'd probably be good to buy at least one more ring now, um, either the Cosmos or the Eventual Reboot, to at least fill out the four rings now, and then every thing from now on. All the other rings that you get will just basically have as the default roll B damage rings. And then if they end up rolling, l let's say that they roll like 20% drop and 18% strength or something, you will be like, okay, well now they're good for both. And then what you can do is you can reroll another ring that maybe has drop rate but doesn't have strength on it. And then maybe that one rolls three line strength or two line strength and it's stronger. And then that one becomes your damage ring for now, right? Because once they're the good event rings, or they're the really strong event rings, or their 17 star rings, they're all kind of similar in how much damage they add to you. So the main important thing of what function they get is just how good their potential ends up being. And the more items you have that are interchangeable, the more outs you have, and the more potential roles for potential that you have that can be useful for your account. And you know, that's mainly because we don't have trade. So you want to give yourself options and more outs so that the upgrades and the functionality on average is cheaper to achieve. Um, yeah, so you had the other pendant and then these earrings, right? So greed pendant, uh, Deocitus earrings, Sakum iron face. Um, you have this uh, alien fragment pendant and then probably these three rings and then one, do you think it's reasonable to get one more Cosmos or Vengeful? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm, if I finish today's coins, I okay. Good, good. Are you doing the, the, the Punch King every day as well? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Um, yeah, so that, and then I would go for Mezzo Drop on those. And that whole process of getting Mezzo and Drop, that's clear as well? Yeah, basically. Okay, cool. All right, all right. And then the main thing for everything else is going to be to just hold on to what you have now, right? Because we don't want to, we don't want to go hard Abzo. Um, which means which means for CRA basically, um, if there's a thirty percent off event, then I would push the CRA to fifteen. If you have the money, of course, you know, always keep in mind that if you're you know buying droplets or something on the background, there's there's no rush in getting to fifteen. It's just that once you get to fifteen, then you can capitalize on five, ten, fifteen, and that's where the huge upgrade comes. But just getting to fifteen doesn't give you all that much extra damage. It's just you know the the pre-spending before you uh, get to 5, 10, 15. Uh, and we had a 5, 10, 15 pretty recently, so there's a yeah, good I, chance. Yeah, I got lucky on, on the pens on that one. I spent like 100 mil or something. Oh, nice. I nice, nice. on the pens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we get the new patch notes, we'll get the new batch of, uh, of Sunny Sundays, right? And then we'll see when the new events are. Um, I think there's a decent chance that we'll get a 30% off at least somewhere during Neo. And that'll be a good chance to get things to 15 but only get the things to 15 that you eventually want to get past 15. Because again, like just getting to 15 doesn't do pretty much anything for you. It's all about being able to get past 15. That's why you want to spend on getting to 15 in the first place. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I, I would keep an eye on the, the Sunday Sundays, but aside from that, like there's no money going into any of this, right? All of the money is going into the accessories for now. Yeah. Um, flames are pretty okay for now, actually. Uh, oh, 100 strength cup. That's very nice. And you have the heart that has 6%. 
Yeah, okay, shoes. Yeah, these are nice flames. Okay, okay, this is good stuff, this is good stuff. Um, yeah, this is very good, solid stuff, and you are going to be spending a lot of time on your accessories and stuff, and all the while, these equips are just gonna stay. So the things that you will primarily be focusing on for these items is just the Star Force, basically. Um, so the items that you want to get to 15 because eventually you want to get them to 17 will be your CRA stuff. And then from the excess, basically just the accessories that can get to 17, 17 so your uh, belt and your earring. Yep. Um, and that'll pretty much be it, you know, like because your flames are all pretty good. Your potentials are, are all at a good point, I would say. And at, definitely at a point where they can stay for a while. It's very similar to my Adele, right? where I have the, the epic uh, necro and the, the belt and all that stuff going. I have a few items that are already at 17 where yours are still 15, but that's pretty much the only big, uh, the only big difference. Um, the only extra thing I think where we can work on a bit more is your flame on your weapon. Uh, it does have 91 strength, which is very nice, of course. Um, that's the equivalent of like 30 attack. So for your for your range boost, that's very good. Um, are you familiar with flames and the flame scores and all that? Yeah, I'm familiar. I I tried to bump in some flames into that, mm -hmm. just not getting the the good tier attack. I think it's normal because you don't have a huge uh, income in flames, right? You don't have like hundreds <laughs> per week that you're getting or anything, so you can't no. be too picky there. Um, so it's not something that I'm saying like you need to work on right now because it's horrible, not at all. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's a tier. Is it a tier five? No, it's tier four. Yeah. So it's a tier four attack. Um, but it's with um, 91 strength, so it's basically like the equivalent of a tier five. Yeah. Um, so that's that's not bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's definitely not bad, but once you get with the... Um, so if you do get flames and you get um, some built up, um, there's not much else that you can throw flames on at this point that would still get some results, right? Maybe your hat? Right, the hat I think is probably your weakest CRA piece. Yeah, that's just the weakest CRA piece. So that one can... Um, the hat can get some improvement. So if you only have like a few flames, you can throw on the hat. But if you get lucky a week or you, you know, get flames from an event shop or something like that, and you can have a bunch of them, I would consider um, working on the weapon. But I wouldn't do that until you have um, to put it into like the time scale, probably at the time where all of your stuff is already 15 starred. And you're like waiting for a 5, 10, 15, but there's not really one coming. Um, and or you're at the stage where uh, and at the stage where all of your accessories are like your your nine set accessory set for drop is like set. Yeah. At that point, I think it's it's worth looking at your uh, at your weapon. So you would I would aim for a tier six, of course. Tier, if you get tier six with nothing else, then that would be good enough to keep. Or if you get a tier five with something in terms of like boss damage, damage all stat, or some kind of combination, or some or like a big chunk of strength like you have now. Um, yeah, but because of how flame scores work, even going from the 78 tier to the 108, the 30 attack, that's like 92, you know, that's like 100, 100 plus flame score for you equivalent. To get that kind of flame score um, equivalent, like over everything, um, well, you're at the 108, right? So 108 to 142 is more what I should be looking at, but that's like 100 flame score increase at least. Um, to get that over all of the items combined would be very, very expensive, but being able to get it just on a weapon is doable. But yeah, not right now, but. That's one of the the upcoming upgrades, I would say. And I think, yeah, then the next step is just popping all the 15s to 17, right? And um, and getting into Helix. Uh, probably start working on um, Commercy, right? Getting the Daenerys there, yeah, working on your boat. On the... Try to get to the Dreadnought and just start building up a lot of Daenerys. And um, because until your stuff right now that can go to 17, you know, so basically the two accessories in the CRA, once all that is 17, that's when you're going to start to think about like, oh yeah, working on a Dominator, um, you know, getting the, the Sweetwater eye and face accessory, thinking about maybe 
you know, maybe Meister Ring stuff, but probably not yet, because with the event rings coming up and everything, you're gonna have rings that are equivalent. So you're not gonna think about like Meister Rings and stuff if you until you're gonna be pushing past 17, past 18, even. So that's still that's still a lot further down the line. But at that point, your Legion and your Links are gonna be a lot stronger. Um, your weapon will uh, be better, and then the arcane. Then your main focus is just gonna be saving everything you possibly can for the arcane stuff, because that's gonna be immeasurably expensive to get to get all of those pieces to 17 to get good flames on them and to get good potential on them is going to be just so expensive but you'll have all of the money you save from not going into abzo to be able to go into that so as long as you train enough get enough of the extra droplets um you'll be able to get those pieces and then with all of those pieces with all of the superior um Golic stuff with all of your links and legion on board um and then probably redone the emblem right for full attack um, yeah. Then you'll have like better familiars, and then you'll be like around 250 or maybe a little bit over 250, be able to do hard lucid and hard will, and then hopefully you get that weapon drop so you can replace this one with a real one. And if you can't, you just keep leveling until you can afford one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, your arcane power is coming along nicely. Uh, but yeah, keep yeah, keep doing those dailies. I will say, finishing journey and choo choo are going to be sped up soon although you're probably kind of cool eh, how close are you to maxing choo choo is it like level 18 no it's are they're both 14. 14 okay okay yeah so choo choo and fencing journey are speeding up a little bit when uh when we get neo so that's going to help that as well uh i don't know exactly when we're getting the extra daily and morass and asphera but you know kms hasn't gotten that yet so that'll still be a while but just the, the, also the sheer amount of strength you get from leveling up your symbols is just very 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 big because even right now, you're like 8k of your stat. Like half of your stat right now is coming from arcane power, right? Yeah. Which is just massive. <laughs> it's absolutely massive. But yeah, like your boss damage will go up. Your damage bonus will go up. Your ID, that will all go up. You're just working on Legion and Lynx. There's not too much extra you need to do on that. Your critical damage will come up. Arcane power is where work is required. And then Star Force will just come when you get the arcane stuff. And before that, on the pieces that we talked about. Hyper size will get wiggled around. For inner ability, I would just hold on to what you have now and definitely wait until after all of that is settled before you start working on the inner ability, I would say. I think right now that's fine. Because a lot of times people prefer the 20% mezzo over the 20% drop. I think it's pretty interchangeable. I think it's both useful. Like you need nodes, you need symbols, like, uh, and you yeah, need the droplets. So it's- Stay with the one I get first. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, because your accessories will, you know, that will, that's where a lot of money will come from. Uh, and then the other thing that we kind of passed by, but what's going to be a, a, a logical effect of everything we talked about, is that once your Legion and Link start rolling, is that you'll have way more access to Legion coupons. And then you can go way harder. Uh, and that will give you even more value of like, hey, this is what like an hour of training looks like. This is what half an hour looks like. This is what, you know, a crazy two hour session looks like. Um, just to increase those those base rates. And then, yeah, once all of that, you know, it's going to be glorious once all of that comes together and works hard for you. But until then, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a slow process. But uh, I think you'll start seeing really big difference in your Legion when you start slowly building on that a little bit every day. Um, you'll get to 1k in no time, 2k will be not too far after that. Um, yeah, I think like a month and a half to two months and you'll be looking at 2 to 3k Legion. You know, just hold on to that, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it seems far away now, but I think it's um I think it's gonna be very doable. And if your you know, your situation changes and the amount of time you have changes, then um you know, you you basically keep the same priorities but it just takes a little bit longer. I I wanted to ask about the the one droid art. I think it mm -hmm. it doesn't have like much junk lines, right? True. Is it, should I try to Legendary? Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. basically once you're working on, um, once the accessories are done, like the weapon flame is improved, and then once all the stuff is 17, um, there's going to be a time before you can move into the arcane stuff, or you're moving to the arcane stuff and try to get the arcane stuff to 17, but their potential will be like at epic in the beginning and then maybe move to unique. Um, once you start working on the potential of the arcane, that's when you want to also be working on the potential of like your heart and stuff. Okay. That's going to be around that point, yeah. Okay. 
And yeah, it'll be cheaper than the other ones, but you know, the arcane also gives you 1% more per line, so kind of, um, oh, and when it comes to the potentials and stuff on the arcane, you want to do the glove first, right? So you, you can get the critical damage on there. That's going to be the uh, the most important potential to get to legendary. That's basically the most important, like, so you have like WSE, that one's set, and then the accessories uh, for the drop of mezzo, that's what you're working on. And then after that, it's going to be glove, glove for crit damage. That's one is huge. And then after that, it basically goes by level and by number of junk lines. So like the arcane stuff, uh, any one, uh, the 160 stuff that you have, like the, uh, the Sweetwater Iron Face, if you move into that, and then the heart, uh, and then the badges that don't exist anymore for people. And then it's going to be just the highest level uh, stuff. So like CRA and, you know, and the Golok stuff. Yeah. You have like a lot of notes now? Yeah, I have a few lines. A few lines, yeah. All right. Any uh, any gaps in the lines? Any things where you are missing the connection or where you need some more explanation? Uh, no. I think there's much. Uh, I don't think there is. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Should, yep. I, should I buy the... Or wait, I can't buy the the coin, right? For our thing, you have to do the lucid and will for that, right? Yeah. So uh, you mean for the neo shop, right? Uh, no, I mean for the exchange coins. Um, exchange coin. You mean the droplet exchange? Yeah. Right. Um, for that. You have to do lucid and will, right? Yeah, it work, yeah, yeah. So y the droplets that drop from the map are part of the resource, but you need to combine them with a drop from lucid or the drop from will, depending on you know which one you yes. killed the most so, to make so the when coins. Am I looking, so when am I looking at to trying to join parties and what? Right. For um, so yeah, for lucid, that's going to be basically once you're able to solo um, Damien and uh, Lotus. If you can solo them, um, like with guild skills, like in around 10 minutes or so, that that's when you're gonna be like strong enough to uh, join the lucid parties, like normal lucid parties. So that's probably gonna be like around, I don't know, like tw like early 20s, like 22, 23 K stat, somewhere around there, maybe up to 25, depending on you know how quickly the Legion and the Lynx and all of that works. Might be closer mm -hmm. to 25, around there. Um, and then basically, if you keep getting stronger, keep getting stronger and you're working on everything, once you get to like 250, um, level 250, you're probably going to be at the point where you can um, get stronger with everything. Hopefully by then you'll be able to move into the arcane stuff. And then that'll be that you, at that point you can start doing a hard lucid stuff. Will is a bit trickier because Will himself is level 250. So if you're just too low level, you won't do any damage to him at all. And most parties start like practicing normal Will at like level 245 at the lowest. Um, and then pretty much there, a lot of times parties that do hard lucid, then also do practice normal will. And then once the normal will, they get it down, they just start doing both and hard bosses kind of thing. Um, I think it'd be a good idea if, if like, as, as a kind of a side point, if will, if normal will was a lower level to make it a little bit more accessible to people. But right now he's, um, yeah, if, even though he's kind of like mentioned in the same breath as lucid, he comes into play much later because of the level difference. All right. Any other questions? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, we're right on time. We're exactly we're like one minute before the or two minutes before the a lot of time. So if you have anything you want to do in the last two minutes, you want to shout out your guild or someone in the game? No, no one. I'm kind of solo. You kind of solo? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I've been solo gaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do that quite far into this game. It's mainly once you, you know, if Lotus and Damien progress feels too slow, doing that or finding struggle parties for that is um, that that that's when that starts being more and more a thing. And and for Lucid and Will, you just have to, right? Um, you can solo, but you have to wait until you're so so overpowered before you start doing those bosses that it will just slow down your general progression if you if you keep soloing. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's still anything that pops up into your brain and it's an important question, just hit me up on Discord. Otherwise, I'll uh, upload it on YouTube so you can rewatch it. Make sure you don't forget anything and you can cringe at listening to your own voice, which is always, <laughs> always fun for everyone. Um, yeah. Or you can, you know, if it's just a small thing, you can always ask me in chat and uh, I'll be available for questions there. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, best of luck. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you in full purple gear. See you in versus. Oh, yeah. True, true. See you then. All right. Bye-bye. All right. All right, cool beans. Right on time, dude. Oh, I'm getting so good with that t scheduling. People buy YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah. So for the people at home in YouTube watching, thank you very much. Um, I hope that there were a few things here that made sense to you. One of the main things why you can skip Abzo and go straight into Arcane is because he's an Adele, and Adele is just ridiculously good he's got uh boost notes coming at the ass really really good uh of course a lot of room to grow for legion and links so that's where the majority of the session went about on prioritizing there that's gonna um, it seems like small little things and it is but they do pile up to become a huge buff for the entire account and specifically for this character of course so i see i see it very possible that this person just completely skips Abzo and goes right into Arcane. Of course, also the um, the fake Arcane weapon, the Oofbra, as I dubbed it, um, very useful in making that transition possible. So specifically, if you're in a similar situation, you can pick parts here. Of course, this is also taking into account the necessity for the flexibility, the necessity, sorry, for the flexibility and for the not having too much time to play the game in total. Um, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but hopefully this was useful to some of you at home as well. As always, if you want one of these sessions as well, check the description of the video. In the description, also a link if you want to join my NA or EU guild in Reboot, Reboot only. And if you have numbers for me, either a battle analysis, monster skill per hour anywhere in Arkin River area, or training videos of you anywhere in Tenebris of any class, you can submit those in a link in the description as well in a form so I can use that as input to help fellow gamers and maybe you'll play a different class one day and you'll be able to use the data that other people submitted for you as well. So if we all come together and submit data, I can use that and give better predictions for everyone playing. Wow, that really just rolled off the tongue there at the end. Um, so yeah, as always, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful for you and I'll see you on the next one.